In our previous video, we saw the different types of directory structures. Now the selection of directory allocation and directory management algorithms, they will affect the efficiency, performance and the reliability of the file system. So in this video, we are going to discuss how the directory is implemented and we are going to take the examples of two data structures, one using a linear list and another using a hash table. If we use a linear list for implementing the directory, so we create a list of file names with pointers to the data blocks. So if this is the first element in the list, the file name is there and along with it there will be a pointer here which will be pointing to the data block. That means where the data is kept. So the directory contains the file name and the pointer where the information or the data is available on the storage device. If this list is being implemented as a linked list, then we can have different nodes. So this pointer over here will be pointing to the next node in the directory. So we can have the file name 2, that is the name of the next file, the pointer to its data block and then again the pointer to the next node in the list. So this way, this kind of a data structure, it is simple to program, but it is time consuming to execute. If we want to create a new file, that means we have to search the whole directory to ensure that there is no existing file with the same name. That means we will have to search this whole directory to find whether there is an existing file name or not. If there is no existing file with the same name, then we will add a new entry at the end of the directory. So suppose this was initially the end of the directory, then a new file entry would be made over here with the new file name pointer to its data block and then null over here if it, this is the last entry. If we want to delete a file, then given the file name, so whatever file name is given which has to be deleted, again the whole list will have to be searched for this particular file name and then the space that has been allocated to it will have to be released. Now if the space has been released for a deleted file, and if we want to reuse that directory entry, so suppose if this was the space that was released, if file name k was deleted, so there is an entry over here which does not have any information now. So this space, this directory entry can be reused. So there are two ways which we can do it. So approach one is that we will mark this entry as unused. So if file name k was deleted, so we will mark this entry as unused by assigning it a special name. So we can assign a special name over here or we can assign it an invalid inode number. You can refer to my previous slides to see what inode means. So this inode number we can assign, an invalid inode number can be assigned or we can use a bit over here. So let's say there is a bit which is used and this bit specifies whether the file is used, the entry is used or unused. So if it is zero, we can mark it as unused. So any new file that comes in can be put over here. That, that directory entry can be put in this unused space. Approach two is that whatever space is released over here for the file that was deleted, we will add it to a list of free directory entries and whenever a new file comes in, this space can be assigned to it. The disadvantage of using a linear list is that if we have to find a file, it requires a linear search of the whole list. Now, we know that directory information is used frequently because users are frequently looking for files. So this kind of a linear search required every time a file is required, 
users will notice it if the access is slow. So what can be done is that many operating systems, they will implement a software cache to store the most recently used directory information. So whatever files are being accessed frequently, let's say file name 2 and file name n are being accessed frequently. So this directory information will be stored in a software cache. So now when the user wants to access that file again, he, the cache can be checked and if it is a hit, then there is no need to reread that directory information from the secondary storage. Also, what we can do is that we can keep the linear list in a sorted manner. So if the list is sorted, this will allow for binary search and it will decrease the average search time. However, keeping a sorted list may complicate creation and deletion of files since a lot of directory information has to be carried from the hard disk to maintain this sorted directory. So to maintain that sorted uh, uh, directory, the directory is on the hard disk or the storage device and to sort it, now every time it has to be sorted because a new file is being created or deleted, that means the whole directory information has to be taken to the memory to sort it. So a more sophisticated data structure like a balance tree can help over here. Another way of implementing the directory is using a hash table. Here again there is a linear list which stores the directory entries but there is a hash table also which takes a computed value from the file name and returns a pointer to file name in the linear list. So now that means the whole list does not need to be searched to get to the required file name. What is done if whatever is the file name it is hashed to index into this hash table. So this key is generated and whatever is the value the corresponding value that is a pointer to that particular entry in the linear list. So we can go directly to that node and then access the file using the pointer to the data block. So this value which is computed from the file name can be checked in the hash table and the file can be accessed directly from there. So this kind of implementation of the directory using a linear list along with a hash table it greatly decreases the directory search time. Also insertion and deletion are straightforward. You can simply add that information in the hash table. But some provision must be made for the collisions. That means if two file names they hash to the same key, then some kind of provision should be made for that also. The major difficulties with the hash table are its fixed size, and the dependence of the hash function on the size. So let's assume that a particular hash table has 64 entries. That means the hash function will now convert the file name into integers from 0 to 63. Now if we want to create a new file which is the 65th file, that means now we must enlarge the directory hash table. So let's say earlier it was just having 64 entries. Now we are enlarging the hash table and now we make it 128 entries. That means now again the hash function has to be changed which should map the file name now from range 0 to 127. And also the existing directory which was having these initial 64 entries, they must also be reorganized to reflect the new hash function values. So now whatever entries were there in the initial hash table, they also need to be mapped such a way that the, now they map to this new entries in the 0 to 127 range. So this is two ways in which a directory structure can be implemented.